Ishengoma. Today we are going to look at group T data statistics. And to be specific, we are going to look at the estimate of mean. We are going to look at how do we find the median class. We are going to look at how do we find the model class. And then we are going to get a cumulative frequency. After getting a cumulative frequency, we are going to use it to draw a graph. After drawing the graph, we are going to use the graph to solve the following questions. Now, let's start with the estimate of mean. Why do we call it an estimate? First of all, if you look closely here, we have got classes. So, because we have classes, we don't have the real value data to use. Hence, we use only the middle value of the class to calculate the mean. So, the value which we use to calculate the mean is not the real data. So, because it's not the real data, that's why we call it estimate of mean. Now, in order for us to find the estimate of mean, we need to know what are those middle values. So, if I get 0 and 10, I add them and then I divide by 2. That is the data I will use in my calculation. 10 plus 20 divided by 2, I get 15. 20 plus 30, that is 50, divided by 2 is 25. 30 plus 40, that is 70. When I divide by 2, I get 35. 40 plus 50. I get 90. When I divide by 2, I get 45. And lastly, 50 plus 60. When I add the 2 and I divide, I get 55. Now, these values I have calculated are the ones which will represent our data in each group. Remember, this is frequency. So, I have to multiply the frequency and our, our, our data which we have calculated. So, 5 plus 6, it will give me 30. 15 plus 45, it will give me 616. 25 times 40 gives me 1,000. 35 times 14 gives me 419. 45 times 10 gives me 450. And lastly, 55 times 6 will give me 330. After doing the calculation, I need to get the sum of all the frequencies which is already given, so that becomes a bit easy. So the sum will be 120. And I also need to get the sum of all the product of frequency and the value of x. And it gives me 2,960. So we know mean is obtained by the summation of fx divided by the summation of f. Remember, our summation of fx, we have already calculated it, that is 2960, divided by the summation of f, that is 120. When I divide this, I will get 24.7. B. Calculate the median class. In short, the median class is the class that will contain our expected median data. If you look at our total cumulative frequency, it's always 120. When we divide it by 2, we get 60. So in short, which position shall we find the 60th number and also the 61st number? If these numbers are all found in one class, automatically that class will be our median class. Now, let's go and look at our cumulative frequency. At the start, I have 6. 6 plus the next class, 44, gives me a total of 50. 
you'll be realized the total of 50 has not reached the position of 60. And this total of 50 plus the next class will take me to a total of 90. Hence, I will realize that after the total of 50, 51 until the 90th are found in this class. Hence, the class of 20 to 130 will contain our median values. The model class. The model class is a class that contains mod. What is mod? Mod is the class that will contain the biggest number of data. Hence, the biggest number of data is represented by the frequencies. So, the class with the highest frequency will be our model class. And in this case, our class will be 10 to 20. But D, complete the cumulative frequency table. As we say, to get the cumulative frequency table, we keep adding one class to another, and next is total to the annexed until we reach the end. Our first value is given 6. 6 plus the next class gives me 50. So I will record there 50. 50 plus the next class gives me 90. I record here 90. 90 plus the next class gives me the data which is already recorded. This data which is already recorded plus the next class that is 10 gives me 114. And finally, 114 plus 6 gives us 120. Now this will be my cumulative frequency table. Roman 2. On the grid below, draw a cumulative frequency diagram to show the information. And obviously, the cumulative frequency diagram will contain y-axis with cumulative frequencies and x-axis with our normal classes. Now, we need to know where each of the class is ending so that we can put our data. Our first class is ending at 10. Therefore, I will go to 10. I will first understand what is my scale on my vertical axis. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to represent 20. So 20 divided by 5, it gives me 4 for each small box. Hence, it will be a simple job for me now. At 10, I will need 6. So 1 box, 6, 4. In the middle of the box, we represent 6. When I go to the end of the next class, the cumulative will take me to 50. So at 20, I need 50. This is 40, 44, 48, and in the middle, it will be 50. The end of the next class, 30, will take me to 90. So I will move at 30 until 90. If this is 80, 84, 88, and this is 90. The end of the next class will take me to 104. So at the end of the next class here, I have to move up till 100, 110, 114. That will be somewhere in the middle there. At the end of, this is 104, right? There. At the end of the next class, it will be 114. And the final will be 120. After plotting all the points, then I will have to join all the points smoothly to form a very nice curve. And this curve will be my cumulative frequency diagram. After drawing my cumulative frequency diagram, how do I use it to calculate for the next part? We know median is the middle part, as I can show you here. If this is zero, this is one. Middle will be half. Here will be a quarter, and there will be three quarters. Now, middle is median. 
the quarter is our lower quartile and these three quarters will be our upper quartile so for median i will use a half times my total cumulative frequency for lower quartile i will use a quarter times my total cumulative frequency now when i multiply i get 60 when i multiply i get 30 remember this is just the portion of the cumulative frequency but it is not my final answer after getting my middle of the cumulative frequency 60 i have to go to my graph when i reach my graph at 60 i have to move horizontally till my graph curve then i move vertically down till where i get the reading and my reading here will be 21 22 and i conclude my answer will now be 22. for lower quartile it is 30. i have to do the same thing i go to my y-axis the value 30 that's here which will move horizontally till my graph then i will make the reading below that would take me to 16.5 so i'll record 16.5 Next, I need to find my interquartile range. In order to get interquartile range, I have to get my upper quartile minus lower quartile. For the case of lower quartile, I've already got my answer, 16.5. But I don't have my upper quartile. Go aside and look for the upper quartile, then come and find the solution. 90. So, 90 i got my graph 90 is there i go horizontally till there and i go vertical down my 90 will be 30. so i have to say 30 minus 16.5 that will give me 13.5 as my interquartile range next i need to find is the 60th percentile Percentile stands for percentage. So 60% of my total cumulative, that is 120. When I simplify my data and I multiply, I get 72. Remember, 72 is the portion of the cumulative frequency. So I need to go to my graph to obtain my real answer. So I got my graph, that is 72, somewhere there. I move horizontally until where my curve is here. I drop down to get my answer. And my answer will be 25. I move to the next question. How many students used more than 45 seconds? How many students used more than 45 seconds? So I go to my graph. 45 seconds is here. If we want how many used more than 45 seconds, it means from the 45 seconds until the end, and the end is 60 seconds. So I need to get the difference from 45 till 60. At 60, my cumulative frequency is 120. But at 45, my cumulative frequency is 110. So if it is 110, and at the final is 120, I need to subtract the two. So I will say 120 minus 110. And finally, my answer will be 10 people. The 10 people are the ones who use the time more than 45 seconds. Next question. How many students used less than 18 seconds? I have to go to my graph, look for the 18th position, go to the graph, and find out what value is 18. If I check closely, 18 is around 39. So, if I go to my graph, 
it will be 39 minus 0 because less than 18 means from 18 to 0 so my final answer will be 39 people used less than 18 seconds final question how many students used between 12 minutes and 32 let's go to a graph let's allocate where 12 is and let's allocate where 32 is and we get the values 12 is here and 12 will give me this value here and if you calculate properly that will be 14 so 12 will have 14 32 is there 32 will give me here 90 94 so that means 94 minus 14 oh, that will give me 80 people meaning what between the students who use the 12 seconds and the students who use 32 seconds those are 80 people this is our grouped data statistics and your presenter was Mr. Ishengoma. Thank you for watching.